All right, so today I want to talk about um, how the Bitcoin halving works. All right, I want to walk through the very uh, short piece of code that's responsible for the Bitcoin halving. Um, and, you know, I, I want to kind of just show you how this works. I want you to understand how this piece of code works because it's such a fundamental piece of code for how Bitcoin, you know, in its entirety functions, right? So um, the piece of code that we're going to talk about is within this function here called get block subsidy. And this function is in this file validation.cpp, which is in the source folder in the Bitcoin GitHub repo. And I'll post some links in this, uh, you know, video as well, if you want to actually look at this yourself. Okay. Um, the three parameters which are used in this function are n height, n subsidy having interval, and coin. Um, these last two parameters are fixed, right? So these, these values don't change at all. Um, the n subsidy having interval, as we all know, is 210,000 blocks. And coin represents the number of units in a single Bitcoin. And so this number is 100, and, 100 million. And we you know, usually call these, we refer to these as Satoshis, right? So 100 million, sorry, 100 million Satoshis per Bitcoin. This first parameter is one that changes over time, right? So this is the block height. And as we mine more and more blocks, the block height gets higher and higher and higher. Okay. So currently we're at, you know, block height 830 something thousand. And once we reach block height 840,000, then the halving happens, right? So let's actually walk through this code and we can see how that works in practice. Okay. So the code is, it's only six lines of code. The first line gives you how many halvings have already passed. Okay. So if we were to plug in the current block height and divide it by n subsidy having interval, then we would get the number of halvings which have already passed. This, um, uh, this parameter halvings is an integer. And so when you divide an integer divided by an integer, um, it will always round down, right? So it will take the floor value of whatever the output is of this. So because n height currently is 830, you know, something thousand, if we divide that by 210,000 and we round down, then we would get halvings equals three. Okay. This lex this, these next two lines of code, they ensure that, um, you know, if we had had 64 halvings or more, then we just return zero, right? So this is just a piece of code that ensures, you know, once we get up to um, the 64th halving, we won't run into, in, into any issues with, you know, data types. And we don't have to get into this technically, but just know this piece of code right here it ensures that, you know, no errors are thrown once we've reached a certain number of halvings. So by the time we reach 64 halvings, we can confidently return zero as the, the, the subsidy, okay? Right, because this function is get block subsidy. So really what this function is doing is it's telling us what the block subsidy is. And once we've reached, you know, 64 halvings, um, actually, far earlier than that, and we'll get into this in a bit, but, you know, just to be sure, 64 is put there, and then it's returned as zero Satoshis for the subsidy, okay? This next line here, it gives you the subsidy in terms of Satoshis. So we all know that the first subsidy was 50 Bitcoin, but we want that in terms of Satoshis, so we multiply it by that coin parameter. And I've, I've, I've actually done that down here, right? So this line can kind of be summarized as this part right here. So when we're getting it in terms of Satoshis, we multiply 50 times 100 million. That gives us 5 billion Satoshis. That was the first um, block subsidy during the first epoch 
right? And for the next step, we actually want this value in terms of binary. So I've written out 5 billion uh, written in terms of binary, okay? So this is the decimal form, this is the binary form in ones and zeros. This next step here is what's called a bitwise operation, okay? Or a bitwise shift operation. Um, and this one in particular is a, a, bit, a bitwise um, right shift operation. So what this function does is it takes this binary number, right? N subsidy in binary form, and then it removes however many digits from the right side as the number of halvings that have passed. So currently three halvings have passed, right? And so to get the current block subsidy, we would remove three digits from the right. And then we would take this number here, right? And we would convert this back into decimal form. Now, when we do that, we would get the current block reward. And the current block reward is 600 and 25 million, right? Or 6.25 Bitcoin. Okay. So that's with three halvings that have already passed. Now, once we reach block height 840,000, then we'll run through this code again. And what we see is um, halvings now equals four, right? So we have 840,000 divided by 210,000. That would equal four. So actually, let me write this out so that it's just crystal clear. So in the future, once we reach block height, Eight hundred forty thousand. Then, oh, wrong one. Havings. Would equal eight hundred forty thousand divided by two hundred ten thousand, which is four. Okay. And then. We take n subsidy, which is 5 billion. So I'll just write this out. Um, 5 billion, but you know, in, in binary form. So <laughs> let me write this out. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, and then nine zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. So that's the initial block subsidy in binary form, 5 billion. And then we do a bitwise right shift operation of 4, meaning we remove 4 decimals from the right. And now we take this number in binary and we convert it back to decimal. This will now give us 312, 500,000, okay? Which is the equivalent of 3.125 Bitcoin. Now, this happens, you know, basically every single time you reach a new 210,000 block interval, then halvings will tick up by one. You'll remove another um, a, a unit from this binary number, right? And then you'll convert it back and it will give you the current block reward or the current block subsidy rather. Um, in terms of Satoshis, okay? And you do this, you know, over and over and over, every single having, every every single 210,000 block interval, and you do it until you've reached all the way to the end. And at this last point here, right, after, I believe, 32 halvings, the subsidy will only be one sat, okay? One sat after 32 halvings. 
Okay, and then on the 33rd having, we get rid of that last digit, and then the block reward subsidy goes to zero sats, and then it stays there forever. Okay, so that's basically how it works. Um, I think the most complicated part of this code is that that bitwise shift operator, right? It's not something that we're very used to seeing unless we're you know familiar with computer science. But once you understand that really all this is doing is it's taking this number in binary form and then removing this number of digits from the right side of it, right? That's all it's doing. And then you convert it back to, to decimal and that gives you, you know, the current block subsidy at any given height. So that's all it is. Um, you know, I hope this clarifies it a little bit for you. Again, you know, I'll, I'll post a link um, of this file and specifically, you know, directing you right to this function so you can go look at it yourself and verify that I've <laughs> written this all out correctly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a very elegant and very beautiful piece of code. Um, and it's, you know, one of the main components of what Bitcoin, of what makes Bitcoin, you know, so special, right? It has a fixed supply. It has a known issuance. Um, we can forward project this out to any block height and we know exactly what the subsidy will be at that block height. And so that we can know, you know, we can prove <laughs> that Bitcoin will have a fixed supply, you know, after 33 halvings and that'll be it. No more. Um, hope that helped you understand the Bitcoin having a little bit more. Hope it didn't confuse you too much. <laughs> um, but if it did and you have more questions, feel free to ask. Or, you know, of course, if I got anything wrong, feel free to correct me. Um, I'm still here learning. So, you know, there may have been some things I overlooked. Um, so I, I'd appreciate any feedback if, if you have any. Thanks for watching.